Dear students, now we are going to discuss single tuned amplifier in detail. Capacitance coupled single tuned amplifier. As the name suggests, single tuned amplifier uses only one parallel resonance circuit as the load impedance in each stage of the amplifier. Here the tuned circuit is tuned to a particular frequency that is known as resonant frequency. This is the diagram of capacitance coupled single tuned amplifier. Here the tuned circuit is used as a load impedance. It is used to resonate at a particular frequency that is known as resonant frequency. At this frequency the inductive reactance is equal to capacitive reactance. So both can be cancelled each other then we can get the load impedance is purely resistive one. So it provides very high impedance to get the maximum output at a particular frequency range that is known as single tuned amplified signal. So here the output of this single tuned amplifier is coupled to the next stage through this coupling capacitor hence it is called as capacitance coupled single tuned amplifier. So that's what given here. In this amplifier, the output across the tuned circuit is coupled to the next stage through the coupling capacitor. Hence, it is called as capacitance coupled amplifier. Here, the tuned circuit is tuned to a resonant frequency. At this condition, the circuit offers very high impedance to amplify only the selected narrow band of frequencies. Okay. So, next one is equivalent circuit of single tuned amplifier. So here we can have three sections, source, transistor and then tuned circuit. So in this side, the source is a voltage signal. So we can use Thevenant circuit Vs in series with the source resistance Rs. The next one is transistor in CE configuration mode. For the CE mode, we can have the equivalent circuit RBB dash, RB dash E and CI at the input side. Here R, B, B dash, R, B dash, E both are representing interjunction resistance. C, I represents the input side capacitance which includes interjunction capacitance. Okay. The output is represented with the current source. Hence we have to use Norton's theorem. So here G, M, B, B dash, E is nothing but the output current. Here the resistance is the RO that is equal to 1 by HOE. This is the transistor equivalent circuit for CE mode. Then the tuned circuit. Here C equivalent that is the output side capacitance which includes the interjunction capacitance of the transistor as well as the capacitance of the tuned circuit. So here LP is the inductance of the tuned circuit and RP is the resistance in associated with this inductor okay and then we have to get the output v naught that is given as input to the next stage so here ri is nothing but input resistance of the next stage okay you will understand this equivalent circuit this is very very important one okay so here ci is the input circuit capacitance it includes interjunction capacitance values CB does E plus CB does C multiplied with 1 minus A. So here CB does C is nothing but the output capacitance between base and collector. So here A is nothing but voltage gain of the amplifier C equivalent. That is output circuit capacitance which includes output resistance CB does C and also the tuned circuit capacitance. So here RO is the output resistance that is RO is equal to 1 by HOE. Then the output voltage is given as VO is equal to minus GM VB does E into EZ. So here EZ is the parallel combination of C, L and R at the output side. So why do we use this minus here? Because in this equivalent circuit the output V naught is equal to here the current is in downwards direction. So we can say minus GM VB does E multiplied with the Z value. Okay. So this impedance represents the parallel combination of 
C, L and R. Okay. Next we are going to analyze the single tuned amplifier. This is the tank circuit. Here the inductance is always represented along with the resistance to represent the coil losses. Okay. Here the series combination of this L and R is used to represent the actual inductance in the tank circuit. But for analysis we have to consider the parallel combination because of its high gain and selectivity. So for our analysis we are going to consider this parallel circuit. So while converting this series to parallel we have to ensure one condition that is the admittance of series connection should always be equal to the admittance of the parallel combination. You all understand this point. So here for parallel circuit we have to consider the admittance value. So Ys should always be equal to Yp. First we are going to get the admittance of the series circuit. What is the admittance of the series circuit? For this series circuit the Zs value is equal to what? R plus J omega L. Correct? Both are in series combination. We are going to get the admittance. Admittance is nothing but what? 1 by Z. That is nothing but Ys. Okay. So 1 by S means what? Uh, 1 by R plus J omega L. That's what given here. Okay. So the admittance of the series circuit is equal to 1 by R plus J omega L. So next we are going to simplify this by using rationalization method. So here we can multiply the numerator and denominator with the complex conjugate of this R plus J omega L. So we can multiply and divide by R minus J omega L. Then we can get R minus J omega L divided by R squared plus omega squared L squared. Then we can separate into real part and imaginary part. So here it is R plus R squared plus omega squared L squared minus J into omega L by R squared plus omega squared L squared. So in the next step we are going to multiply and divide by omega in this complex term. For further simplification, okay. So then we can get the series admittance Ys is equal to R by R squared plus omega squared L squared minus J omega squared L by omega into R squared plus omega squared L squared. So next step we have to move this minus J to this denominator as we know that minus J is equal to what? Plus 1 by J. So this term becomes like this. Consider this as the first equation. So next we have to consider the admittance of the parallel circuit. So in this parallel circuit we can consider these two values. So here it is like this. This is inductance. Okay. So this is LP. So here it is represented as 1 by RP. So this admittance is represented as 1 by J omega LP. So this are the admittances of the individual one. So we can get the overall Admittance is equal to 1 by RP plus 1 by J omega LP. Consider this as the second equation. So now we are going to compare these two equations. Then we can equate the real part together and imaginary part together. So here 1 by RP is equal to R divided by R squared plus omega squared L squared. 1 by J omega LP is equal to this term. Then we can get the value like this. The parallel resistance value as R squared plus omega squared L squared by R and then the parallel inductance value as R squared plus omega squared L squared by omega squared L. So these two are very very important equations. Do you all understand this one? So now we have obtained parallel resistance and parallel inductance values. So after that we can substitute these values in the resonant frequency, quality factor and all other characteristics. So here the resonant frequency or center frequency is given as fr is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of l into c. For this single tune we can use lp into c equivalent where here lp is nothing but the fourth equation and c equivalent is equal to c naught plus c where the c naught is the output circuit capacitance c is the capacitance of the tuned circuit okay. Next one is quality factor. The Q factor of the coil at resonance is given as QR is equal to omega R LP by RP. So this is the general formula for parallel resonance circuit. So this is the unloaded Q factor for the single tuned amplifier. But in practical case 
the output resistance and the input resistance of the next stage both can act as a load. First we are going to find out this unloaded Q factor and then find out the loaded Q factor. Okay. For getting the large Q factor we have to ensure that this omega L is for greater than this R. Correct. For larger values of Q factor, the numerator is always greater than the denominator. So here we can assume omega L is always greater than or far greater than for large Q factor. So for this value, we have to find out the parallel resistance and parallel inductance values. From third equation, we can write the parallel resistance is equal to R squared plus omega squared L squared by R. We can split this into two parts that is R squared by R plus omega squared L squared by R. So this can be written as RP is equal to R plus omega squared L squared by R. As we know that omega squared L squared by R is far greater than 1 then this R value is negligible. So here the parallel resistance for large Q factor is equal to omega squared L squared by R. Do you all understand this concept? So similarly we can get the parallel inductance value from fourth equation LP is equal to R squared plus omega squared L squared by omega squared L. So this can be written like this that is R squared by omega squared L plus omega squared L squared by omega squared L. Then we can write this parallel inductance is equal to R squared by omega squared L plus L. As this omega L by R is far greater than 1, R by omega L is far less than 1 which is negligible. So we can simply neglect this value. We can get the parallel inductance is equal to inductance L. So this is the 8th equation. So now we are going to substitute this 8th and 7th equations in the 6th one. Right. Then substitute 7th and 8th equations in the 6th equation we can get. QR is equal to omega R, LP is equal to L, RP is equal to omega R squared, L squared by R. Okay, then we can simply divide all the terms and then we can get the answer as R by omega R, L. So this is the quality factor for this parallel circuit. Okay, so here we can consider this value as ninth equation. So next one is effective quality factor. The effective quality means what? Loaded quality factor. So here we have to consider the load. So it includes the load that is nothing but the sum of output resistance and the input resistance to the next stage. So for that we can, can consider only the output circuit. So we can start from this output side. So this RP, R0 and RI, these three are combined together as RT. This is the parallel combination of the parallel resistance and here it is the output resistance of the transistor and the input resistance of the next stage. Do you all understand this one? For this loader quality factor, the definition is the ratio of susceptance of inductance or capacitance to the conductance of the shunt resistance. So here the susceptance of the inductance is equal to 1 by XL that is equal to 1 by omega R LP. Susceptance of C equivalent is equal to 1 by Xc. As we know that Xc is equal to 1 by omega Rc equivalent. So it is equal to omega Rc equivalent. Conductance of Rt is equal to 1 by Rt. We have to substitute these values in this formula. Then we can get effective quality factor is equal to susceptance of inductance is what? 1 by omega R Lp divided by conductance of the resistance is 1 by Rt. This RT goes to the numerator then we can get RT divided by omega R LP. Similarly for this capacitance we can get omega R C equivalent RT. Next one is voltage gain of the single tuned amplifier. It is the ratio of output voltage to the input voltage. So from the equivalent circuit we can get the value of output voltage V0 is equal to minus GM VB does E into EZ right. So we have already obtained this value in the equivalent circuit itself. So next we are going to find out the value of this V, B does E. For that we can consider this input side. Here we are going to use voltage divider rule. We are going to obtain this V, B does E from this input side. 
So here that is equal to what? Rb dash E divided by the total resistance Rb B dash plus Rb dash E into the input voltage. So this is the Vb dash E value. So then we have to substitute this value in this Vb dash E. Then we have to substitute this value in this formula. Then this Vi and this Vi both can be divided. We can get the voltage gain as minus Gm Rb dash E by Rbb dash plus Rb dash E into Ez. Here this Ez is nothing but the parallel combination of RO, RP and RI. So, so now we can consider Ez is equal to RT by 1 plus J2 del into effective quality factor. So here this del is nothing but fractional variation of the resonant frequency. So this can be represented like this that is omega minus omega r divided by omega r. That is the fractional variation in the resonant frequency. This can be written like this omega by omega r minus omega r by omega r. Then we can get its value is what? 1. So from this we come to know that omega by omega r is equal to this minus 1 goes to this side that is equal to 1 plus del. So this is the common value of this fractional variation of the resonant frequency del. So now we are going to substitute that z value as RT by 1 plus J2 del effective quality factor in this AV formula. Then we can get the expression as minus GM. Here it is RB does E by RBB does plus RB does E into this Z value. Consider this as the 11th equation. So next we are going to find out the voltage gain exactly at the resonant frequency. So in this previous voltage gain there is a some variation in frequency. But we are going to find out the voltage gain at resonant frequency alone. At that time there is no variation. We can equate this del is equal to 0. Then we can get the voltage gain at resonant frequency is equal to minus gm rb does e by rbb does plus rb does e. Here this term becomes 0. Correct? Then we can get only the term rt. Consider this as the 12th equation. So next step we are going to find out the relative gain of the single tuned amplifier. So this parameter is very very important to analyze the tuned amplifier. So the relative gain means the ratio of the voltage gain to the voltage gain at resonant condition. So we have to substitute this 11th and 12th equation in this formula. Then we can get this values are cancel and here RT, RT cancel, GM minus GM minus GM divided. Then we can get the relative gain of the single tuned amplifier as AV to AV resonance is equal to 1 by 1 plus J to del effective quality factor. So this is the relative gain of the single tuned amplifier. It is very very important one. Okay. Next we have to take the magnitude of this relative gain. So for that we can take the magnitude value of this denominator. So that is equal to 1 by square root of 1 plus 2 del effective quality factor square. So this is very important formula to be used in the bandwidth analysis. Okay. So 3 dB bandwidth del F is equal to 1 by 2 pi RT into C equal N. So here gain bandwidth product of the single tuned amplifier is equal to GM by 2 pi C.